everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of 101 with Stephanie. I'm Stephanie Jamberry. Today I'm super excited. As promised, I was going to be bringing you stories from the grassroots, stories of people doing extraordinary things within their community. Today I have Nkenda Bells. She was born in Zambia, educated in Botswana. She's a motivational speaker, representer and also a social change maker. She's a peer educator, educating young people and getting them to tell her issues or discuss issues about cyberbullying, domestic violence, and many more. She describes herself, or she calls herself, as a citizen of the world. Please help me welcome Nkendu Belt. Kendu Belt. She was born in Zambia, educated in Botswana. She's a motivational speaker, a social change maker. I'm so privileged to be having a chat with her today. She's going to tell you a lot about her. Hello, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much. That was an amazing introduction and I am so humbled to be here. You deserve it. Thank you. you. You're doing so much. Who, who, who is Nkendu Belt? So Nkendu Belt, so I was born in Zambia and lived in Botswana and the Netherlands and now I call Australia home. So um, I've grown up as a social change maker. It's just a calling that I've had to own her from a very, very young age. I was a peer educator when I was in Botswana, uh, counseling young people about, you know, reducing the stigma that was attached to HIV AIDS and um, talking about girl child rights when I was in my birth country, Zambia. And coming here to Australia, just doing a lot of work with young people in schools and universities here. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Zambia? Um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it, Africa, of course, has its own challenges, but there was a lot of beautiful things as a child. Um, I remember the food, you know, like it's just amazing. There's color, there is dancing, there is, you know, so much. But then again, at the same time, you know, when you are presented with an opportunity, there's always challenges. So there were challenges that would face like, you know, girls and women being treated as second class citizens. So those are some of the things that, you know, as a people, I was, I had to be involved in, in fighting for that and, you know, lending my voice to the people that didn't have a voice. So talking about girl child and raising the girl child in Africa, we, we, we seem to treat the uh, girl child um, as a second class citizen. You seem to be very vocal. Where would you say that stemmed from? I think it stemmed from my father. You know, when I was 10 years old, my father said to me, don't let, one, don't let anyone ever suppress your integrity or tell you what to do just because you're a girl. You know, go out there and let people treat you, you know, best on your you know, capabilities, not based on your gender. What are some of the projects you're working on? So, some of the projects that I'm working on at the moment, other than, you know, promoting my book, I'm um, writing another book, Fierce and Fabulous, The Feminine Force of Success, which is following the lives of three, uh, I mean, 13 extraordinary women. And I'm also doing a documentary, Home is Here, where I'm following the lives of migrants and the change that they're making. And I do STEM cell, which is science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and social enterprise learning, where we're encouraging girls in particular to be interested in science. As you know, a lot of young people in Australia, they are consumers of technology. So we're teaching them to become creators of technology. Let's talk about this book. I think it's one of the one of the best books I've ever read. I've actually read it twice oh, at, at, at the moment. What, what actually inspired it? It's called I Have the Power, Unlocking Potentials to Change the World. What inspired this book? So this book was inspired by, it is inspired from within. So I lived in Western Australia before coming to Victoria and when I came to Victoria, I found that, you know, it was really competitive in order to get funding, you know, for me to continue my not-for-profit projects that I was doing. So I wanted to find an avenue of where I could actually share what I had learned throughout my life, you know, with other people, especially young people. How can I best empower young people? So I decided to put all those lessons in a book. I read the book 
And there's a part, there's a concept you stressed a lot about here, which is the Ubuntu, Ubuntu. philosophy. Well, what is it about? Yes, yes. So Ubuntu is an African philosophy which describes the oneness of humanity. And this philosophy was emphasized by Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela talked a lot about Ubuntu. And the direct translation of Ubuntu is, I am because we are. And it's about, you know, giving to other people, you know, helping them out, being nice, um, having compassion. And a lot of it is just using common sense because everyone that we meet, they're fighting their own battles. So just a kind word or just a nice smile may put somebody from the edge. Uh, this is why she's a motivational speaker. I'm um, speaking about that concept and how, how Mandela actually fought for that sort of thing. We, we've been hearing so much about the xenophobic attack happening in South Africa. How, how do you think, I don't, don't want us to say how do we think Mandela will feel about the experience or what people are experiencing in South Africa. Yes. But I think, it's, do, do you think this is a direct slap to what Mandela really, really represents? Well, it is, it is, and I think he would be turning in his grave. Because, you know, Nelson Mandela and other, our other forefathers as well, they fought so hard, you know, for us to have the freedom that we actually have today. So seeing senseless attacks on fellow Africans, that was just sad. And, you know, it, it's, it's not a way of treating other human beings. You know, what happened in South Africa, it's, I condemn it and a lot of African people do condemn it and also friends of Africa and if it was the idea of you know people feeling that they do not have enough because foreigners are coming in and taking their jobs I think there are better ways of going about you know expressing themselves in a respectful way without having to lose lives. You, you, you just wow. talk with so much passion and I think that's why people will are drawn to you. you. You do a lot of work with young people, with youth. Yeah. Well, yes. well, how do you think that they're able to, because it's hard for them to open up in this day and age, talk to you about cyberbullying, domestic violence, which sort of talk, um, tears them apart. Do you find them connecting a lot more with you and how have you been able to achieve that? Yeah, um, in terms of connection, we have the human connection. You know, and it's about removing that mask and coming to a level of where everyone is equal. You know, so if you put yourself on a pedestal, people will not relate to you. And if you put yourself as an underdog, nobody wants to hang around an underdog. So you want to be at the same level with everyone. So with the young people that I work with, you know, because we're talking about real issues, and these are some of the issues that I have personally, you know, gone through. So it's coming from a place of understanding. And I think um, we have a vision, we have a common vision, and that's what makes this, my projects work. How projects work a lot. I think this book is something most people should go buy, especially young girls out there. Go buy it and read it because it's got so much knowledge you can actually, from high experiences, you can learn a thing or two from it. I'm talking about philanthropism and being a philanthropic. Your parents were actually one. That's the reason why you are the way you are today. And they actually went through a traumatic experience, uh, taking care of a cousin who died in your arm, in, in, in your mother's house. arms. Yes. And yes. Was, your parents were criticized um, for that. What lesson did you learn out of that. Um, I learned the biggest lesson I learned from that experience was that how much love my parents had you know despite or oh, still have actually because despite you know um, looking after other people's experience uh, other people's children and having this girl you know die in my mother's presence and you know did everything to try to, to, to resuscitate her and we had no idea that she had a pre-existing condition and uh, I thought that would be the end of my parents looking after other people's children. But they didn't stop. They went ahead and looked after many other children. As well as now, they look after you know, two adopted um, young siblings that I have. So it's about you know, not how hard life hits you, but how hard you can actually bounce back from the challenges that you have faced. And people will always say something about you. People will always criticize you. But it comes back to you as a person, as how strong are you? And don't let anyone ever, you know, make you sad about what you've said or what you've done or what you should be doing.
I can just see how I'm actually get, getting carried away just watching her talk because she's got so much, so much knowledge to share. Uh, if you don't actually get anything out of this interview, it's the fact that you can fall and bounce back to life no matter how hard life has treated you. You have an interesting thing happening in a few months. Yes. I'm so excited you're going to be interviewing the Dalai Lama. His Holiness. How awesome, how awesome. How do you feel about that? I'm, I'm pretty much humbled. It's a very humbling experience. Um, I first met His Holiness two years ago when I was asked to interview him at a Young Minds conference in uh, Sydney. And last year I got a call from the organizers of the conference saying the Dalai Lama is coming back to Sydney next year in June, meaning this year, 2015. And if I would like to interview, uh, if I would like to MC the conference, so I will be master of ceremony on day two of the Happiness and its Causes conference. And when does it start? So this is on the 11th, the 10th and the 11th of June. So at uh, Luna Park in mm. Sydney. Yeah, and uh, I've got some discounted tickets. So if you want to hang out with me or with the conference mm. people, yeah, just follow the link below and uh, we can get some discounted tickets and get you guys there. Wow. She's master of ceremony, a motivational speaker, a pioneer, talks to young people. She, in fact, her, her attributes are just nameless and endless. Uh, I think we could keep having this chat with her, but we're going to end it here. For every young person out there watching you right now, what would you say is that thing that has kept you going? Um, the thing that has kept me going, it's the passion that's within. You know, I have a goal and um, you will face challenges, you know, that is the truth. And sometimes you will feel like giving up. And my grandmother used to say to me uh, two things. She used to say that the darkest hour is before dawn. So don't give up on your dreams or your passion. And she, the other thing she used to say to me is that life is like a journey. It's like climbing a mountain and you will find stumbling blocks along the way. So you can either go around them or you can go over them. And whichever way you choose, do it with a good attitude. Everybody's trying to figure life out and whatever you're going through, it's just a stepping stone to the next big thing. Before I let you go, you're a woman. You're a mother of three kids and a dog, and you've got a husband. Yes. And you are traveling almost every day. Where do you tap that energy from? And, and also, because um, most women get to a certain age in their life and yeah. they don't want to do anything. Um, do, do you think there's, a, there's an end to anything anyone can achieve in life as well? Um, I think there's no end, you know, like it, it, it doesn't stop. You never stop dreaming, you know. I know there's some women that had a dream and then they had children and they had to put that dream on hold. You can still rekindle that dream. You know, and it's about having a good team around you, you know, have a mastermind team, whether it be your best friend, you know, have an accountability partner, you know, whether it's your husband, your boyfriend, your mother, your teachers, whoever, you know, but just share your vision with other people because when you share what it is that you want to achieve, it's amazing how other people will actually come on board and they will help you realizing your dream. So you need the help of others. I have been having a chat with this beautiful, talented, amazing mother, motivational speaker, everything you can. In fact, if you really want to know more about her, this book, I think it's a well-written book and, and it's very raw. Some part of it will get you angry, some part of it will make you really smile, some part of you will make you ask, really? Does that really happen? So it's one book you don't want to miss out reading and it's quite cheap as well. It's only $25 if you wanted to get your hand on it. This is like coffee for three days or coffee yes. for four days. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn a lot. Buy it, give it to your daughters, your girlfriends, your wives. And I think there's so much. It's packed with so much knowledge. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And all the best with your future projects. Well, thank you very much. It's been really, really humbling being here. And thank you everyone for watching. Hope we see you soon. Thank you. It's one on one with Stephanie. Have a good one.